Hi everyone! I'm back today to talk about a subject that I have been investigating a lot over the past eight months, I guess, um, and that is how and why do I cloth diaper my baby. Uh, the first thing I want to start off with is that in life I try and follow the 80-20 rule. So 80% of the time I'm trying to cloth diaper him and 20% of the time I'm using disposable nappies, diapers, um, because it's not always practical to cloth diaper a baby, especially when you're traveling or if you're staying over at someone else's house or it's the middle of the night and you're so tired you can't even think. Maybe it's just easier to grab a disposable. But I do want to give you um, insight into what I do and if you're considering cloth diapering, why you would even want to in the first place and how I do it and how I've kind of found uh, it works for me at the moment at least, um, eight months eight and a half months in. So the first thing is why would you want a cloth diaper when there are a, an array of disposable options available to you? Um, for me there's a lot of different, there's a few, there's a lot of different reasons. The first one um, is what initially led me to it is that traditional diapers and nappies have a lot of really bad chemicals in them which is what causes um, them to be very absorbent. So there's like a gel inside the layer and um, that's against the baby's skin and it draws away the fluid and it expands. The second thing is um, the environment and whilst I know I should be more environmentally conscious I do think that considering that diapers don't biodegrade I think ever I, but I could be wrong well, it takes hundreds of years um, this was something that I was like this I will produce less waste it's less waste for me um, it's not something you can you can't recycle them um, and maybe I'm doing something good by not using disposables as my regular go-to diaper um, the other thing is cost so I think once you've invested in cloth diapers and I probably spent way more money than I even needed to looking back if I had to advise someone, there's a lot less stuff options that I would probably spend my money on. There's a, there's cheaper ways to do it, um, especially if you have multiple children and you use them for multiple children, then you're definitely going to save a lot of money. So if you're price sensitive, that's something to consider. Um, and the other thing is the comfort with the baby. You know, with cloth diapers, it's usually I think cotton probably works the best, but I've also used bamboo. It's very soft against their skin, um, and it's. So if you're using them regularly and changing the baby regularly, which you should be doing, you're probably going to have a lot less diaper rash. And something else that I've realized along the way is that actually I don't really ever have what is termed a blowout diaper. So because of the way a cloth diaper kind of cinches around the baby's waist, it contains everything. So um, you don't really have all the poo going up their back because it's it's pretty much contained. Um, in the, the cloth diaper and then as a side note they're really they're really cute there's some really nice designs they're really sweet looking um, oh another really important thing is and I haven't experienced this yet which is maybe why the next think about it straight away but supposedly babies that are cloth diapered potty train a lot earlier up to six months even earlier than that but I'll have to get back to you on that one because I'm not really sure um, but because they don't have um, the cloth diapers you can feel that you're wet babies can feel that they're wet they get that feedback once they're old enough, so they're much more likely to potty train because um, they can feel when they're wet. They're not just they're not as comfortable, I guess, with a soiled, wet cloth diaper as they are with a disposable. So those are kind of my top reasons why I have chosen to cloth diaper. And eight months in, I will say that it's now kind of a habit. And when I do use disposables, whilst it's sort of a treat because it's like quick. I kind of miss my cloth diapering thing. I don't know why, because it is an extra step, but it's so automatic now that it's just something that we do, um, and it's not even an issue. And I even got my husband on board, and he's not someone who shies away from convenience. Let's just say that. So I'm really happy that he has let me has let me decide has let has allowed me to cloth diaper our child and embrace it. Um, although I do have some emergency disposables if he needs, or if even if I need, or if the nanny needs, or whatever. So. Um, as I said, 80-20, 80-20. The next thing I want to talk about is kind of my system of what I found works for me and if I had to do it all again, what I would spend money on and what I wouldn't. Um, there are a lot of cloth diapering shares and that you can actually 
probably buy buy your cloth diapers from someone else which may sound a bit strange but they get washed so thoroughly that um, you can just use them indefinitely that's why you can use them through multiple children I guess it doesn't always have, they don't always have to be your children but if you really want to make them cost effective you could actually buy some from someone else or maybe even get them donated um, through like baby sharing, mommy sharing groups because if someone's decided they're not going to use them anymore and they have a whole pile in various sizes even if you're going to use your cloth diaper as a dishcloth or a rag or a cleaning rag you probably won't need all of them so you might want to get rid of them so that's even an easier way to do it and then there are also companies that I'll talk about um, that sell you secondhand cloth diapers that might even have ones that discontinued stock that they want to get rid of so you can really probably get them a lot cheaper than if you had to buy them all brand new um, the other thing is also to put them on your baby registry um, so that you can be gifted them and then you, they last you for a long time um, so I'm going to start off with probably my go-to sort of method and process and I'll talk about a few other kinds as well so for those of you that don't know what a cloth diaper looks like there are various way various ways that these things come in um, the, the my preferred way actually is what is called a pre-fold and I guess it's called a pre-fold I mean it's not pre-folded but you pre-fold it before you put the cover, the waterproof cover on. I don't know. But basically, it's a two-part system. This would be just your basic. This is probably the cheapest way to do it. This is a bamboo um, pre-fold. I believe it says it somewhere. Um, yeah, bamboo. Fifty-five percent bamboo, forty-five percent cotton. Um, and this is from a brand called Diaper Right, and I think this is like their house brand. And I will link their website down below so you can go and look at it. Um, I really like the bamboo because they're very soft, but I have been told by diaper cloth diapering experts that cotton is the most absorbent. But basically, there's three panels, if you can see, and then the middle panel is thicker. So I believe it's four ply, eight ply, four ply. Um, you lay the baby, their butt would be here, they'd be lying down, butt would be here. This goes around their waist, and then this becomes like a three fold that folds over them like that and then um, you you cinch them in on the sides. Um, I will also link the video that I used to teach myself how to do this. So you cinch it with these little, uh, these are Boingo clips, little clips, I'm not sure what their correct name is. They have very sharp little teeth and I have stabbed myself using them unfortunately. Now I don't and I don't, oh, well, I haven't in a while, touch wood, <laughs> so I don't know if that's because I'm getting better at it. I don't know. But you can either use a clip like that on each side, or you use this thing, which again, I've actually forgotten what this is called. Oh, this is a snappy. So then you just kind of spread it out. It's got a bit of elasticity in it. This one comes down. So because this is the absorbent part, all right, it needs a waterproof cover. So here is your little, here's where the cute kind of comes in, I guess. Um, and this is a waterproof little diaper cover. Um, and this is size one. My son's now kind of getting size two, depending on what kind of diapers we're using. But um, and this is by the brand called Thirsties. These are definitely my favorite. Obviously, I haven't tried every kind, but this is for zero to nine months, six to eighteen pounds. So he's right on the eighteen pound mark. So this is kind of what he would be wearing. So that's basically your basic system. You do the angel fold, and I'll link the video below. And then you put this over. And you kind of, I would tuck in, I tuck in all of this so that none of it's showing so it doesn't wick onto his clothes. The theory would be that if it gets wet, it, the moisture will travel through the diaper um, and travel onto their clothes. So at night, I would use a pre-fold in whichever size. He's now kind of into intermediate sizes. That's another thing, they come in different sizes. Um, you get newborn, small, medium, intermediate, large, I think. And every company has slightly different grading systems as to sizing options as to how they do that so you kind of have to experiment um, and then I use a hemp liner which has a fleece side so the fleece side goes against the baby's skin and then the hemp side is what makes it really absorbent because hemp is very thirsty as they describe it and then now that he's bigger I've actually been putting in another um, hemp liner and I sometimes alternate depending on what I have available because I only have a certain amount of these and then to really make it nighttime um, waterproof this is something I was very hesitant about doing um, but I use a wool cover so 
these are little like wool pull-up shorts they're really cute um, and wool is naturally very absorbent if you think about a sheep they <laughs> are naturally waterproof um, and it keeps the sheep and the baby cool um, when it's hot and warm when it's cold um, and the the wool surprisingly even though it doesn't feel waterproof to you is actually very waterproof but what you have to do when you get one of these wool covers is you actually have to analyze them and I didn't know what that was in the beginning and I tried it without doing this you should always research before um, and I put this on and I mean it was soaked because it wasn't analyzed and a sheep naturally produces lanolin which is oil and oil um, a waterproof oil and I think certain dogs that are waterproof probably also do this um, dogs that, like, that swim um, and so what you do is there's usually a process with lanolin you would melt the lanolin um, in warm water and you soak you soak the cover in the warm water and the lanolin kind of sticks to it and becomes sticky and then you should be re lanolizing your wool covers once or twice a month depending on how much you use them but the great thing about wool covers is you don't really need to wash them very often you just take the wool cover off in the morning when you change the baby from the night time and you just let it air dry and it actually doesn't smell and I really was very critical about this but it doesn't smell like anything it air, it air dries and you don't need to wash it and so I have three of these that I've kind of I don't you don't even need three but I was gifted one so you probably need two maybe just because they do take a while to dry when you actually do wash them um, because they're so absorbent with moisture uh, but yeah, and then you rot you just rotate them. I mean, you do need to keep it up with the lanolin, I would say probably at least once a month, just to make sure if that's still what you're using. So yeah, so nighttime is a little bit more, there's a little bit more steps, um, but if it gives you 10, 12 hours without you having to change the baby, then more power to you. Then. Yeah. And I do think it reduces diaper rash, that's another thing, you know. Um, babies are very, have very sensitive skin, and depending on what kind of, um, or kind of disposable you're using. I mean, Theo, I don't think has ever really had a tr typical diaper rash in the way that I envisage it, which is like big angry rash all over. He's had a few spots and the only time that's happened is when we've traveled and had to use disposables and maybe haven't been able to change them as regularly. And it's, it's if there's, you know, if it's soiled as opposed to just wet. Um, and, but once I get in, once I've gotten into the routine of cloth diaper him, diapering him, washing them correctly, um, changing him, as it, as it should be changed, I have not had any trouble, um, and it's been working out really well. So, so far at the moment, we're in a good place with this. Then, if you don't want to use um, a pre-fold system, so this with the with the waterproof because it's too many steps or, or for whatever reason, you do get um, diapers called all-in-ones or pocket diapers, and I have two different brands of those that I will show you. So the first one is Bum Genius. I, was gonna say. <laughs> I couldn't remember the name for a second. That's my brain right now. Um, and they are really cute. I mean, they, this is like this is a bit, this is the cream one, but they come in all different colors. I don't know if they come in patterns. Probably, maybe, but I don't know. Um, and this is called a pocket diaper because you stuff it. It has a pocket over here, like this. Um, and then you stuff it with the little liners and I think I don't know if it'll tell me what these are made of I don't think they're hemp they're probably cotton no they are polyester and nylon so this is not as natural fibers if that's if that's important to you um, these are okay they feel like fleece like micro fleece they're absorbent but I have found they do not work overnight personally maybe my baby's a very heavy wetter but even with the two, so they come like this and then you get like a booster one that you can put in so you don't have to use this. Um, just stuff them in, stuff them in there. Very nice for during the day and, and easy to change. They come in, they have all these little studs that allow you to, in theory, you can use them on a newborn. Um, I don't think we did because even with newborn I felt like he was still very small to use this. Um, but you could, you just, they size up and down and I think they're designed from newborn until potty training. So this would get you, I mean, in terms of cost, you know, this will last you a long time if they, if you look after them and wash them correctly and everything. Also being kind of a synthetic fabric, they dry very, you know, they stand up, stand, they 
you know, stand up well in the dryer and that kind of thing because they're like one step. If they're already stuffed and ready to go, they're just one step and they're kind of like putting on a disposable. So, <laughs> apologies for probably what looks a little different now. <laughs> My battery died, um, which probably was a sign that this is quite a long rambly video. But in that time, someone got up from his nap, the, the cloth diaper person in question. So, uh, <laughs> so I thought Theo could quickly join us for the last little bit. I just wanted to talk about how we wash the cloth diapers. Um, so I'm going to put him down. Hopefully he'll, I mean, what am I saying? Hopefully he'll stay occupied. I mean, I'm going to put him down um, with a toy. So if you hear banging and baby noises, that's, this is, this is the culprit. This is the culprit and I love his little outfit. Um, I must find out who the brand is. Let me see. It's got a little skull on it. Does it say what it is? It doesn't say the brand on here. It's probably the back of him. And my dog is jumping up. Oh, it's called Nu Nu Nu. So there you go. So this brand, this little onesie is Nu 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 and it's actually a, scent, a scented onesie. Um, it was a bit of a splurge onesie. I thought it was on sale and it was actually reduced, but it wasn't really cheap in the end. Oh, oh, and the dog is on my lap. But isn't that cute? Look, I think this is going to be a good travel, travel outfit. It's the softest, softest um, material. So, new, 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 I love your, I love your onesies. We love your onesies. Okay, so I'm going to put him down and I'll be right back. And you, I mean, crazy. I wanted to talk quickly um, about washing the cloth diapers because that's really a big... Um, that's really a big concern if you're thinking of doing it. Um, there are two options. The one would be to get a cloth to do a, have a cloth diaper service. Um, in New York, there's a, a fantastic service called Diaper Kind. I'll link them down below. Um, I went and spoke with Liz from Diaper Kind, and she really helped me um, decide what I wanted to do. And she gave me a lot of tips. So I credit a lot. I credit a lot of how my system is working to her. I've had to tweak it as he's gotten older and change it, but. Uh, a little bit, but essentially I followed um, their, uh, well it's her and their tips down to the T, especially when it comes to washing, and that's really made a difference. Um, it's actually really not as difficult as I thought. So we have a diaper pail, which we bought from Diaper Kind, which is just, you could use a normal rubbish bin, garbage bin, whatever you wanted. Um, and then it has a liner, which is, I believe it's the Blueberry brand, and I'll link that down below. Um, but you can get the multiple different kinds of re reusable, wa washable liners, and it's sort of coated, waterproof coated in inside. And literally, the diaper pail has a little carbon filter and a little citrus wafer disc that you um, that you keep on it just to keep the diapers smelling really, or not smelling at all, unless you open the diaper pail and stick the whole head in there. But in theory, you could you could actually not wash them for a week because that's what the service does. They collect once a week, and so the little citrus wafer and the carbon filter um, help prevent odors. Um, I wash with home laundering. They recommend every two to three days. So I usually wash the way my system works. I wash on a Thursday and a Sunday, so that's three four days, um, and I've actually it's been fine. Um, I literally, put, so all my nappies and covers and everything are in the reusable diaper light, uh, diaper pail liner. I literally pick the whole thing up like a big laundry bag and put it in the washing machine. Um, I do a 20 minute cold rinse with um, some detergent. This is actually homemade detergent and I'll, sh I'll explain to you how to make it. It's really easy, but you could use a specific cloth nappy detergent. Um, they like... I think Diaper Kind recommends Charlie's Soap, um, which is also which is very popular. Um, you can get it on Amazon or through various retailers, but you can make your own as well very easily. Um, so I do that, a quick wash, it happens to be 20 minutes cold, so that any s soiled matter, it doesn't get cooked into the diaper. Um, and then I do a hot um, hour cycle, but I don't, I'm not removing anything out of the washing machine, I'm just resetting the washing machine once it's done the first cycle. And then I do one more cold rinse after that with no detergent, and obviously the middle, the middle cycle, which is the hot one, has more detergent. And then I put it in the dryer, and that's all. So to make this detergent, you know, it ends up being very cheap per little scoop. It's literally 
Super washing soda. This is Arm & Hammer. I don't know if other brands make it, but this is the really popular one. It's cheap. Um, Borax. Let me do this like this. Which is a detergent booster. And I do, I sort of do one-to-one -one of this. I read about using this stuff, which is OxyClean Baby, which I think is supposed to be pretty nat rather like natural, but it's a bit gentler. And this really helps get up stains. I literally mix it all in this little jar. I just mix up some new ones. And this will last a while. I hope this has shed some light on um, cloth diapering. It's really not as bad as you think it is. And there's some really big pros. Um, you know, it saves money, especially if you do the laundering yourself. If you're getting a service, it's, it's probably comparable to disposables. But then if, you know, um, we should all be worried about saving the environment, but it it's helps with the environment. Um, I really think it reduces nappy rash. It promotes early potty training. Um, and, you know, you can use these nappy diapers for multiple children. I really, you know, I'm enjoying doing it, as weird as that sounds. Um, and I've liked, I've enjoyed trying the different brands and I definitely found a system that works well for me. Maybe that'll change as it gets bigger. Um, but so far it's working out well, so. Thank you so much for watching. I know this has been a really long video, but I hope it was informative. I know that I really struggle to find a lot of information um, accessibly. So I'll try to link everything that's helped me below, including videos to um, help you navigate this whole system and decide whether it's for you. Um, please subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. I'm really trying to build up this channel um, and to share the things that are going on in my life and that I love. Um, and that I found useful, especially with navigating babies and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, and please like this video and share it with your friends. And my social media will all be down below. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Can you say bye? You can just, you can just clap your hands. Can you clap? Will you clap? Will you clap, Theo? Oh no, stage fright. Okay, <laughs> bye. Hi, senor. Hello. Hi. Theo, can you say hello?